am looking at the Asus Zen Wi-Fi AX system. This is a brand new uh, for 2020 mesh router system and it has the new Wi-Fi 6 standard. One of the things I really like about Asus products is their build quality. This uh, Wi-Fi mesh system supports band steering. So essentially what that means is whether you're on 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, um, the, the mesh system and the firmware will automatically uh, choose the, the best band uh, for your situation. So 2.4 gigahertz typically gives you better range uh, going through walls, things like that. 5 gigahertz uh, gives you uh, more uh, throughput, uh, but the range is not so good. So the band steering uh, it basically automatically uh, says you should be on this band uh, because you get better signal, better throughput. And it works, for the most part, it works really well. The router also has the uh, option of allowing you to separate the uh, uh, network so you can actually have multiple networks so you could have a 2.4 gigahertz network a 5 gigahertz network if you wish to separate them along the side of the uh, routers uh, you can see there's a lot of ventilation um, the actual inside of the router has a very uh, good uh, uh, and a large heat sink to dissipate the heat um, and at the top of the router, there's also some, uh, some gap around the, the circle that allows for heat to escape from the units themselves. ASUS says that uh, the two uh, units, uh, when joined together, can cover up to 5,500 square feet. Um, so, and again, these are, these are two units. Uh, you can add more. The, one of the main advantages of ASUS AI Mesh is there's really no limit. Uh, to how many uh, nodes you want to add. So in terms of the specs, uh, both uh, mesh units have a uh, one gigabit WAN port um, and three gigabit uh, LAN ports, as well as a USB 3 port. Uh, each unit also has six internal antennas and ASUS has, uh, based on the diagram I've seen, uh, they're pointing in different directions to try and optimize, you know, the, the, the best direction depending on where your devices are. Um, the memory, there's 256 megabytes of flash memory and 512 megabytes of uh, RAM. The, it doesn't say it on the box, but I'm quite sure that it's a, uh, is at least over a gigahertz uh, core clock on the unit, on each unit, and uh, it is a quad core unit. And I, I believe the uh, brand of CPU is uh, Qualcomm. Um, and in my experience, Qualcomm has uh, just better results than Broad Broadcom. Uh, Broadcom is the other kind of competing wireless uh, company out there. And in the past, it, with Asus routers that I've used, I've had issues with Broadcom. So I tend to avoid those uh, any units that have those. It has support for a wide range of wireless standards, all the way from B up to the, a, the, to the brand new AX standards. Um, I'm not gonna go through each of these individually, but as you can see on the box, uh, there's plenty of support. And in terms of encryption, you have the standard WPA and WPA2. It doesn't say it on the box, but in fact, in the firmware I discovered, it does support w, WPA3, which is the brand new security measures. So in terms of features, there's the standard features that come with all ASUS routers. Uh, AI Mesh, there's a mobile app that allows you to change certain settings on the router from your phone um, and uh, monitor certain settings. MU, uh, MIMO is supported, AI Protection, which is their free, um, uh, basically it's like a enhanced firewall for the router um, that is regularly up to date with Trend Micro, uh, parental controls, guest network, a uh, ton of features um, and just standard networking features like UPnP uh, and uh, you know DDNS. There's lots of you know the standard features on, that you get in most routers. On both units, you have your power uh, connector, you have power switch, the three LANs, and then your WAN port, and then the USB 3 port. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is that um, the WAN port. Uh, on the uh, the 
extension node essentially is what I'll call it. Uh, basically the one that isn't connected to your modem that is used to expand your, your network. Uh, this cannot be used uh, as an additional LAN port, which is unfortunate because I thought that since the extra node um, wasn't going to need a WAN connection because you're using the other node for your WAN connection, I thought that just this would be a normal LAN port that you could connect a device to, but unfortunately I found out that if you, you know, wire something into that port, um, it basically does nothing. So I don't know if that's something that ASUS can potentially add as a feature in the firmware to allow you to use that port as a LAN port. It just seems kind of wasteful to not use it at all. In terms of uh, LED notif notifications, um, the Zen Wi-Fi is pretty uh, basic, so there is no multiple LEDs for like 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, WAN, things like that, like you, you normally see on a lot of other routers. Um, there's just basically one LED that um, turns on, and uh, essentially the colors are when it first turns on, it will, you know, when you first get the units and you activate them, they will start blinking green. Uh, and that's basically them, you know, doing their initial configuration. And then um, once they're, you know, doing the setup for the, for the mesh, it'll go to blue and it'll blink blue for a little bit. And then once your setup is totally complete, it turns a solid white. Um, and then that's basically it for uh, notification lights on the actual units themselves. And, and both the main router and the extra node, they both light up. So there are two versions of the Zen Wi-Fi. You can get it in white or black. Um, I have the white version, which I think blends in well with my desk with the white modem next to it. Um, and I think for most people, the white uh, will blend in better. Um, but just so you're aware, there is a black version um, in both the AX version and the AC version of the Zen Wi-Fi. One of the firmware features I really like in ASUS routers is the uh, QoS uh, section. So here you can actually um, customize your QoS in many different ways. You can There's three options for QoS type, um, and uh, I personally like to use the adaptive QoS. It's the more modern version and it works fairly well. And then I also like going into the customize section. And in this interface, you can actually prioritize things uh, such as gaming, video and audio streaming, web surfing, other file transferring and uh, voice over IP and instant messaging. So with this, you can actually click on things and drag and drop and sort of prioritize, you know, the different things that you want to prioritize. Um, in my case, I, I usually uh, have things set at um, you know gaming first and then streaming next and then the the other things you know are lower priority um, so it's one of the better features of Asus routers is you're able to do that um, in my, the Netgear Orbi uh, it has an adaptive QoS system in the firmware but you can't customize it the other area and feature that I really like in Asus routers is the AI protection. So basically what the AI protection is, is a enhanced firewall. Um, and in a lot of uh, f um, other routers that are out there, they provide um, optional enhanced firewalls, but in many cases you have to pay for it. Um, Asus, uh, in, in cooperation with Trend Micro, has a completely free enhanced firewall. And uh, so what this does, and there's really no reason to not have this on, um, you, it has an option for blocking malicious websites, a two-way intrusion prevention system, um, and then also an infected device prevention and blocking. So if you have a, a laptop or something that it detects that has something on it, it'll block it on the network, things like that. So um, it's a really great feature, um, and I, I would recommend uh, definitely turning it on. One of the first things I also do in the ASUS uh, firmware is go to the firewall section. And in here, um, the firewall is turned on automatically, but as you'll see, the enabled D, uh, DOS 
uh, protection is not turned on by default. I don't know why ASUS doesn't turn this on by default. Um, it does use uh, a little bit more of the resources of the of the router, but it um, with with the quad core and 512 megabytes of RAM, you shouldn't have to worry about stressing uh, by turning this feature on. So I definitely recommend turning it on, just for an extra you know layer of security. I also um, go to the WAN section in the ASUS firmware and um, by default it connects to the DNS server automatically so whatever your ISP uh, from uh, you know pulls in um, in most cases it's 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 it'll it'll work just as fine doing it automatically but I've actually found that I get better speeds um, using Google DNS so what I do is I put in the uh, for DNS Server 1 and 2, the um, Google DNS uh, IPs. And um, there's other ones available, of course. There's OpenDNS, which is another good one. Um, and, you know, some people like using Cloudflare. I've used Cloudflare before, but I've found that I've had problems with them. They'll just, it's not really that reliable. It'll go down, and when your DNS goes down, it, it actually, you know, slow, it actually stops your internet from working. So I found in terms of reliability, Google and OpenDNS to be the best. Another area that I like going into is the professional section in the wireless uh, area in the ASUS firmware. This is where you can do a lot of damage if you don't really know what you're doing. In most cases, you should just leave everything on default and it'll work really, really fine. Um, but one of the things that I do like to do is uh, in the 2.4 gigahertz band, uh, in the professional section of that one is I like to change the preamble type from long to short. Long is meant for if you have any devices that um, uh, are older and then you know it makes sense why Asus would turn this on to be defaulted at long because they don't know what devices you're gonna have on your network. So in terms of you know more mass supported uh, devices uh, long makes sense but it's mainly uh, a legacy option for older devices so if the devices that you have on your network are like mostly N, uh, N devices, AC devices, AX devices, even G you can turn this on short you don't need it to be on long and you'll probably find you'll get a little bit extra of a throughput if you have it on short um, and then the other thing that I like to do is for whatever reason um, on this ASUS router the modulation scheme was set by default to MCS7, which is the default N modulation uh, scheme, which works fine. Um, but you just bought a really expensive router, um, you should be maximizing the performance. So what you want to do is set it to up to MCS9, which is the turbo uh, option. Uh, and then that's pretty much everything that you have to change on this section. I wouldn't really mess with anything else. Um, it's not really necessary. Um, you might turn on airtime fairness if you have a lot of if you have older devices on your network. This option can be good, for example, if you have like a an older B or G uh, device that's on your network, because if those older devices are on your network they will actually slow down your other newer devices. So what airtime fairness does is try to favor the newer devices over the older ones. Asus firmwares also have a, a nice little uh, feature of showing the status of the router so you can actually see what cores are being utilized and their percentages and you can see how much RAM is being used, how much total RAM you have versus f used RAM versus free RAM. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, a cool little feature to have to see kind of like a real time, you know, idea of what your router is doing and a lot of routers don't have that. So it is a nice little feature to, to have. Out of the box, the Zen Wi-Fi just works. A Asus, it's like they, they, from the ground up, they developed this new Zen Wi-Fi to, to be built from the ground up around AI Mesh. If you're going to, if you're going to want a mesh system, I think that you're going to want this Zen Wi-Fi versus any of the older Asus ones. Now it is more expensive. They do have a cheaper AC version of the Zen Wi-Fi. So if you don't want to future proof and or if you don't have any AX uh, devices and you don't care about future proofing, there is the cheaper option of the AC. With Asus you also have the 
uh, constant firmware updates now. I mean, I found that Asus, they, they always release a ton of firmware updates for their products. So they're always keeping it supported. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's important to buy a product that, you know, they're, you know, the company is actually going to support some of those other, you know, wireless, you know, home wireless companies that are out there, like your Linksys and your D-Links, they'll release a product and then they'll maybe like release a handful, if not even a handful of firmware updates. And then it's just like, boom, we're done with that product. We'll re release another one. So, you know, you want to, you want to buy a product that is going to have that support. And, you know, Asus, you know, they do have a really good, you know, warranty. They do release a lot of updates. They have a, a really good, uh, you know, online community where you can go and get help. So um, for me, this is probably the best router that I've ever used. So highly recommended.